Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And we are just one week away from the big day if you celebrate Christmas. So if you were watching this when this first posts, thank you so, so much for sp spending some of your valuable time during this incredibly busy holiday season with me. And if you're watching it after the fact, thank you also for being here. I really appreciate your continued support and I'm hoping for a fabulous 2024 here on YouTube with all of you amazing viewers and subscribers. By the way, if you are not a subscriber yet, I would love if you would like to join our little community here. And of course, I always appreciate all of those thumbs up and comments as well. Today, I have a great book subscription to share with you. It is not one of the ones that is sent to me for review. Occasionally, they have sent out boxes to reviewers, but usually that opportunity comes up after it's already gone out to subscribers. So I always like to be in on it and try to stay on track with my reading. So for the past good portion of this last year because I finally caught up on all of my book boxes. I've actually been subscribing in three month stints to save a little bit of money, but also that it kind of allows me to read the hints because that's what they do. They announce the hint for the upcoming month and then you can decide if it's a box that you want to maybe skip. Sometimes when it's a romance or I have a lot of stuff in my TBR pile, I'll go ahead and skip a box and then that just kind of extends my subscription or you can get really excited about that title that's coming out. We are, of course, talking about Once Upon a Book Club, and of course, this pink box signifies that it is the adult selection. They also have subscriptions with young adult fiction, as well as a middle grader box. They do all kinds of fun limited edition and holiday related boxes as well. I have reviewed their advent box two times, not this year, but in the past, and some of their holiday ones, like their Halloween boxes can be really fun, or their up all night New Year's Eve boxes can be really fun. I do have an affiliate link as well as a code for you. It's actually more of a referral code. It kind of helps to go towards uh, my renewing my subscription to keep sharing it with you here on the channel. But basically the code is just Noel 10 and that will save you 10%. But don't worry, I'll leave all that information for you in the description box below. Let's go ahead and talk about this awesome book that we got for the month of November. So I am pretty caught up on my Once Upon a Book Club boxes. Now I will say there is another awesome book subscription that we open here on the channel. They have gotten a little bit behind and we actually use them for our book club, but I have faith because once Upon a Time, Once Upon Book Club was super behind on their shipping as well, and they got everything all straightened out. So the book that we got to read for November was this charming book, One Puzzling Afternoon, which is by Emily Critchley. It is a paperback. It does have a Once Upon a Book Club sticker on it. I will read you the blurb, but first let's just talk about all of the items that are always in a Once Upon a Book Club box. So you also get this nice little sort of guide and this has the hint on the bottom, so they don't tell you the title up front. It's kind of a surprise, but they do give you kind of a pretty pretty good uh, hint. It's like several paragraphs usually that they send out or that you can find on their website. So the hint was pieces of the past. And then inside they have a nice interview with the author usually, which I think is really cool to get that behind the scenes. Then they have discussion questions if you are using these books for your own book club or just for your own reading. If you're someone like me who kind of loved being in English class back in school. And then of course they have their Facebook chat group and they also had uh, there are five gifts in this one. One of them was kind of a paper gift, but I will say, guys, over the past few years, Once Upon a Book Club has gotten so much better with the quality of their gifts, and I really do think that the value is there. They have a lot of, well, one, they definitely have their packaging made in-house, but they do have some of the items made in-house to really truly bring the items uh have the items bring the novel to life, which is the whole idea. I feel like they're kind of the OG book box that does that, where as you're reading along, you'll come across a sticky note that tells you to open the corresponding gift, and the gifts have gotten better, I think, in my personal opinion. There are definitely boxes that are stronger than others, but I really enjoyed this one. And then on the back, they usually have like an article or a recipe or just something to go along with the story, and this time around, we have a puzzling crossword because our our main character, she does do crosswords to try to keep that mind working. So I'll put this off to the side. If I have any time to read any of the questions and answers from the author, I definitely will. But that means we have five gifts, so we have five passages to read in the book. So we probably won't have time for that today. One of the other things that you always get in a Once Upon a Book Club box is their quote card, their five by seven quote card, which is kind of nice to just have up if you have like a little reading corner in your house, or if you have an office, or if you're real fancy and you have a library, I 
I think it's really fun to like swap these cards out as you're reading. So this one, it's very cute. It's got a lot of bunnies. It kind of reminds me of that other, other bunny book though that I just read with another box, which is a little scary. It says, you always think there's so much time to do things, to see places, then you realize there's hardly any time at all. So true. And on the back of this, we do have a letter from the author, which again, I love that touch that uh, Once Upon a Book Club box is big enough that they're able to do these collaborations with the authors. So I haven't actually read that. So again, if I have some time, I will definitely read that with you. Sometimes they're better than others. Sometimes they're like a synopsis of the book that I feel like they sent out to like publishers. And sometimes they really give you a little bit of the behind the scenes. And then we have a matching bookmark from Once Upon a Book Club with that same quote. And then they do usually include a few advertisements for upcoming books, like it's just a, like a little insert, so I don't usually like pay too much attention to those. This particular one though came with a signed book plate to put inside, and you can actually read her whole name there, Miss Emily Critchley, that's really cool. So even though it's a paperback, I don't usually like, I mean I have definitely have signed books with paperbacks, like I have a bunch of David Sedaris paperbacks where I always feel bad having him sign them at the end of a long night because I'm like, I, I couldn't spring for the hardcover, um, but I'm sure the authors don't mind. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and read the blurb on the back and then we'll get into our passages and the gifts. So she is British. Now I'm not sure if she's like, I don't think she's like super posh British, but um, I just kind of go back and forth between my English accents, so bear with me, but I'm just going to do the best I can and maybe that'll distract you from my scratchy throat and voice. So, I kept your secret, Lucy. I kept it for more than 60 years. It is 1951 and at a, oh, I don't really have to read it in a British accent for this. It is 1951 and at number six Sycamore Street, 15 year old Edie Green is lonely. Living with her eccentric mother and her mother's new boyfriend, she is desperate for something to shake her from her dull, isolated life. So when the popular, pretty Lucy Thettle befriends Edie, she thinks all her troubles are over. Even though Lucy has a secret, one Edie is not certain she should keep. And then Lucy goes missing. Now, in 2018, Edie is 82 and still living in the same small town when one afternoon she glimpses Lucy Thettle, still looking the same as she did at 15. Her family writes it off as one of her many mix-ups. There's a lot Edie gets confused about these days, but Edie knows she's the key to finding Lucy. Time is running out and Edie must piece together the clues before Lucy is forgotten forever. So it's one of those books where it goes back and forth between two time frames. I didn't mind it at all. It's mostly in the voice of Miss Edie and it's kind of fun because she is forgetful. She's actually in the beginning stages of dementia and um, so we slowly piece together this mystery and uh, there were a couple of red herrings. There were definitely, I, I thought that the person that she saw that she thought was Lucy Thettle was maybe Lucy's daughter. I'm not going to tell you that I think that some of the passages based on the gifts though might have some spoilers so if this is a book that you don't want any spoilers for maybe you skip like the last half of this video but I do think it's worth a read if you like a mystery and it's a charming mystery there's not a lot of like blood or gore in it then absolutely get your hands on this book I thought it was delightful so let me see. So the first one didn't come until, it was like 300 and something pages, like 350. So the first one didn't come until 151. So I'm going to find it in here. I do have a little cheat sheet. There was like one on 151 and then right away on 154. Sometimes when it's a book I'm struggling through, I, I really like it when they spread it out a little bit more. I do have this scratchy throat, so I am going to have a sip of my tea. All right, so this is what it looks like when you come across one of the sticky notes. I'm just really impressed that they're able to get all of these boxes out because there are a lot of touches that have to go in in terms of the packaging. I did notice that they started packaging the boxes that they have printed in shrink wrap instead of that little itty bitty tape that they used to use, which I am so grateful for because I used to hate that tape because it always got sticky and it was really hard to open up sometimes. So um, it's probably a lighter touch. It's probably a lot of a faster process than having someone apply tape to each of those boxes. It is more plastic waste though. All right, let me see if I can find the passage. Hmm. So this is back in uh, 1951. The sea comes into view and I can now smell salt on the breeze. We glide past the long row of brightly colored beach huts. Let me go for my British accent. Lucy points out her parents' hut, striped red and white like a Christmas candy cane. We dismount and walk our bicycles down through the dunes. It's much cooler here on account of the strong sea breeze. Lucy takes her sandals off and hooks them over her handlebars. 
Aren't you going to take your shoes off, Edie? The sand is lovely. Oh no, I say. I don't like the feel of it. Lucy laughs. You are funny. We, spot, we find a spot in the dunes and sit on the blanket Lucy has brought with her. I finally remove my shoes and socks, taking care to keep my feet on the blanket. The beach is busy. Clearly everyone else in Ludthorpe has, has had the same idea as us. There are schoolgirls, groups of boys, mothers with toddlers. A few brave children run in and out of the grey surf, shrieking. A man and a small girl. Father and daughter are flying a red kite. It dips and dives in the wind. I try to avoid start staring out at the sea, as when I do, I can see my father's head bobbing among the waves. There, and then not there, and all because of me. I shake my head. Things are changing for me, and I no longer need to dwell on the past. I've finally found a true friend. So she's finally found Lucy Thedel to be her friend. And it is the largest gift, and you can see it's in this nice drawstring bag that they have printed up, and it goes along with the puzzling afternoon, right? So it's really charming that they spend the money on this nice packaging. I don't mind most of the time when they have, again, I understand that it's more efficient for them to have the page numbers printed on the packaging. So we have this nice little drawstring bag, which you could totally use as like a shoe bag for packing with the puzzles. And then inside we have more. So this is a little band and it has a quote. We find a spot on the dunes and sit on the blanket Lucy has brought with her. So it is a beach blanket. It is said so. So we have this little band. I haven't opened it up because it looked really big, but I think it's tie dye. So I don't know that they would have been into tie-dye quite yet in 1951. Maybe, who knows? Sorry for all the sounds, but you guys know I like to do my unboxings with you without making any changes. Oh, I feel like there might be an image on here. So it's got a lot of, oh, it's one of those round beach towels. How fun. So it's got an image of a girl. This might be a piece of famous artwork, you guys that you'll have to help me find. So here she is with some tea. Oh, fun. So it's got fringe going all the way around. Uh, you can't really see the whole thing. I apologize. But that's a fun beach blanket with a like a little bit of a British touch and like artwork. I kind of like that. I think that's a really fun, unique beach blanket to have. So uh, these brown ones were like all the all the craze like a couple of years ago, but I don't mind getting another one. Um, I hadn't obviously opened it up. So our next one comes on page 154. Let me see if I can remember what this one is. Oh, so this is Lucy. Uh, lots of people like Lucy. Uh, she's very popular. Max gave me this. She hands me a bottle and I run my finger over the grooves of the stopper. Evening in Paris is printed on the globe label. Did he buy it in Paris? Lucy giggles. No, he bought it in London. He went to see the Festival of Britain. So lucky. Try some, she says, gesturing to the perfume bottle. Oh, no. I attempt to give the bottle back to Lucy, but she insists. Go on. I spray a little onto my wrists. Rub it behind your ears. Isn't it dreamy? I inhale deeply. I smell like Lucy. Bergamot, lilac, rose, and jasmine. I smell of lust and passion and dark secrets. A shiver runs through me and I give her the bottle back, watching as she sprays some on herself. From her bag, she takes a Cody box with an orange and gold pattern. My mother would be envious. She'd love a Cody powder. Lucy lightly dabs the cream powder puff into the box. Using a small compact mirror, she expertly brushes the puff over her nose, cheekbones, and forehead. I look a perfect sight. It's the wind. So we have with little bunnies. Uh, we have 154 and it is huge, you guys. So it came with this nice, nice foam insert. We got a whole bottle of perfume that they have essentially, and even the interior of the box is really cool, that they've essentially white labeled for this. So it is a puzzling perfume is what they've called it. Uh, an evening in Paris. And then, oh goodness, we have a little like bunny um, like doorstop on a stack of books there on the top if you can see it and it says reading in Paris instead of evening in Paris but it does have those fragrance notes of bergamot lilac rose and jasmine so it's just this huge bottle a hundred milliliters I wonder if I can open it up oh does it unscrew let's see if we can get a little sniff going I like those scents I think that's pretty cool it's very strong I definitely can smell the lilac, but I love the scent of lilac, so I'm kind of okay with that. I wonder if I have to screw it on. Okay, so that's a pretty big size bottle um, and kind of fun. Hard to re-gift if it's not a scent that you like or you don't use perfume, but again, two significant gifts that we've gotten already. 
The next one came on $1.95 and it was a little bit more of a paper gift. Oh, this is fun. I forgot, there is a green ribbon that's on page 196. So if I can remember to come back to that, I don't know if I'll, I'll remember. Oh yeah. So here we go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It says, what's the next one? Okay. So now they are in the present time and they are uh, looking at, talking to um, Lucy's brother and kind of finding some of the things that he still has from when Lucy went missing. And Amy is uh, Edie's granddaughter. Amy has put the, put the coatie powder back and is looking at something else. I lean over. She's holding two train tickets in a faded pink. British, British Railways, single second, Ludthorpe to London. Ah, yes, the tickets, George says sadly. Did she take a trip to London, Amy asks. Keep them as a memento, perhaps. I study the two tickets. They're not punched, George nods. That's what my father said, and the police. It looks like they were bought, but never used. They gave my mother great hope, though, as you can imagine. I take the tickets from Amy, rubbing the smooth card between my fingers. She thought Lucy might have gone to London. But why would Lucy leave these tickets behind if she was planning to use them, Amy asks. George rubs his eyes. Of course, we all came up with all sorts of theories. She might have left in a rush, had to buy more. She changed her mind and went somewhere else. And why two tickets, Amy muses, peering inside the box again. George wipes his glasses. My mother had the idea that Lucy had gone to London in her head for years. It was as if she knew something, something more than the tickets, something we didn't. Once a month or so, she'd book herself into a hotel in London for a couple of nights and go about walking and inquiring, searching for Lucy. So then we have this green ribbon. I don't remember what the green ribbon was all about. Huh. I, now I can't get out of it. Um, I'll have to remember, but I think that is kind of fun that we have something like a green ribbon in there. Interesting, but I want to make sure that we get to our last two gifts and we're running out of time. So page 195, we got a little, and I like this because here is our London train ticket. It says for alternative routes, see book of routes. Uh, so we have our London train ticket, but they have turned it into a bookmark. So it's a paper ticket, but they have made it a useful one. So I don't mind that at all. I'm so curious about that green ribbon now. I don't remember like that scene where a green ribbon is significant. Hmm. 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 I'm sure I'll remember. Maybe it was found with all of her things. All right. Let's see. On page 215, we have another one. Okay. This should be quick. So she is, is, this is in the present time. Dementia. That's what the woman had said that day. Dementia is what's stealing my time, my memories. It's responsible for the fog, the static, the lost words. I've tried to fight it, but I'm losing. I touch the pendant at my neck, the tiny rose, pressing it between my fingertips. I don't ask Amy anymore. I don't want to upset her. I, it's enough that she's here with me, and I know she's here with me. The fog is lifted as I knew it would. I'm just having a bad day, that's all. There will be more bad days, but there will be good ones too. I'm fortunate to have those. I will hold tightly on to each good day. So it is very sad in that way that she is uh, has, has that dementia. So let's see, we have page 215, beautiful boxes, right? They do such a great job with the packaging. And then we have, of course, so this is, I can give you a little bit of a spoiler because I did give you the warning. So this is Lucy's necklace and it's not, um, so it came in this plastic. It's not a necklace that she actually gave to Edie. It's one that Edie saw her actually at the pawn shop with it and then she went and bought it back for her. So it says, there will be more bad days, but there will be good ones too. And it says Lucy's necklace. And of course, it's this beautiful necklace with this little rose pendant. And I thought they gave us such a nice gift. Even the chain you can see is a little bit of a nice rope chain that's gonna catch the light. Isn't that gorgeous? I think for like costume jewelry that they included in a book box, that is like really stunning, nice, nice item. So we have one more to go. I won't have time to read the author's conversation or the like note from the author or figure out that green ribbon, but I will have time, I hope, to get through this last passage for you on page 309, which t is towards the end. Let's see. So she's, a lot has come back to her. Uh, let's see. Then I begin to panic. I can't forget. Not again. I reach for a pad of paper, the pad Josie writes my shopping lists on. I grab a pen and write in large, shaky handwriting. Lucy was on the floor. She fell on the rabbit. Reg said we couldn't tell anyone. Reg made it go away. 
I look down at what I've written. I am ready to face the consequences, to sacrifice the rest of my life so that Lucy and her family can have their peace, the closure they deserve. I've got to work out of... I've got to work out a way of getting out of the house when I'm locked in. I must confess to what I've done. I'll call them now. I'll call the police and tell them what I did. Don't worry. Don't worry, everyone. But here is the bicycle because uh, they just find Lucy's bicycle and those train tickets and she has disappeared. And maybe a green ribbon. I don't know why I don't remember that. Oh, goodness. Now this is going to be one of those boxes. It's really hard to open up. Let me see. I should be able to open it. Ah, oh, such a perfect fit. How lovely is this? They gave us two items, a pretty to do notepad and a very pretty matching pen. So it says there's a hundred sheets. It's from Once Upon a Book Club. I love it. It's got this bunny border. Obviously it just says the Lucy was on the floor on the top sheet and then the following sheets are going to be blank. But what an awesome detail that they had the first page printed differently. And then we have this cute bunny pen to go with. I thought this was an amazing gift to end with. So overall, we got five gifts. I don't really count this one, but I love that they are thinking about making the paper gifts mean a little bit more. I love that little detail of the green ribbon, which I totally forgot to look up and realize how that goes into it. But you get the quote card, you get the bookmark, you get the guide and the interviews. And then we got four quality gifts with this beach uh, blanket, the Reading in Paris perfume, which does smell very nice. We also got the beautiful necklace, that is my favorite, as well as the notepad and the pen. So you guys let me know in the comments below what your favorite was. It was a great book as well, so overall a fantastic box from Once Upon a Book Club. I'll see you all very soon in my next unboxing.